Okay, I'm going to go through seven common verses that are twisted to teach conditional security and give a rebuttal to each one of them. So the first one is Romans chapter 11, verse 21 to 22. It says, full screen, For a God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity but towards the goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And say, so see, you can be cut off. Uh, that's not the context of this of these two verses. The context is going against Israel. It's not talking about salvation. So when it says you should, you'll be cut off, it's, ta it's talking about, I believe it's talking about nationally being cut off. It's not talking about you being cut off in terms of your salvation. Again, read the context. It's talking about going against Israel, not salvation. Second one is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. You'll hear this one a lot from the conditional security heretics. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10. And you'll, you'll see why they use this one. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So you see, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. You have to stop sinning. You have to live holy to be saved. Um, the kingdom of God is not heaven, okay? According to Romans 14, 17, I'll show you that one, the kingdom of God is spiritual fellowship with God. So when it says you won't inherit the kingdom of God, it's just simply saying you won't be in spiritual fellowship with God, but you're still saved. That's simple. When you get when you get into sin, when you get uh, living according to the flesh, you get out of fellowship with God, but you don't lose your salvation though. Romans fourteen seventeen, for the kingdom of God does not meet and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's spiritual fellowship. It's not talking about heaven. The kingdom of God is not heaven. So again, when it says you won't inherit the kingdom of God, it's just simply saying you'll get out of fellowship with God. But you're still saved. That simple. So the next one you'll hear is Galatians 5, 19 and 21. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And again, what is the kingdom of God? They're saying, they're making out like the kingdom of God is heaven. No, it's spiritual fellowship. So when you do these things, when you do, when you live according to the sinful flesh, then you get out of fellowship with God, but again, you're still saved. So it's not talking about salvation. Uh, another one you hear, Ephesians 5.5. 5. That's the next one you hear. Ephesians 5.5 5. says... For this, we do, for this we know that nor whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And again, kingdom of God, spiritual fellowship. Not talking about salvation, and it's not talking about heaven either. Uh, fifth one you'll hear, uh, 1 Corinthians 9.27. Another common one you hear, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that, lest that by any means, when I when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. So you see, you can be a castaway. Um, when it talks about being a castaway, it's saying you can live according to the sinful flesh and basically just destroy and ruin your life. That simple. You lose spiritual joy, you lose rewards, the judgment seat of Christ, you can lose your life eventually. So you can destroy your life if, you're, if your flesh gets too out of control and you're just living according to the flesh, then you become a castaway. So you, you your life is destroyed, but it's not talking about losing your salvation. That simple. So, again, just twisting the verses. Because if you read it, it's saying, it, it just when you live according to the flesh, your life is destroyed. But you're still saved, though. That's simple. So when it says being a castaway, it's not saying you've lost your salvation. It's just saying that you just you, you, you wreck your life, essentially. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5. 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 5. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter hath tempted you, and our labor be in vain. And I'll say, see, your la why can your labor be in vain? Your labor can be in vain. You can lose your salvation. Um, again, when Paul says your labor be in vain, he's saying he's just simply saying he doesn't want to waste time with these people who are going to get messed up. It's that simple. So when he's saying my labor will be in vain, he's not saying I've lost my salvation. He's just saying I don't want to waste my time with you if you're if you're just going to keep being messed up and keep, or if you're going to get messed up, I'm not going to waste my time with you. I don't want to, my labor to be in vain. 
That's what he's talking about. He's not saying my labor will be in vain because I've lost my salvation. Just they're very desperate. And the seventh one, Galatians chapter five, verse four, very common one. Galatians chapter five, verse four. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. They'll say, see, you can fall from grace. Um, read the context. Again, they, lo they love ripping verses out of context. The context is the Galatians are thinking they're going back under the law, and Paul is telling them, okay, if you're going back under the law, then Christ has no effect unto you. It's funny, he's actually, if you look at the context, he's actually uh, speaking against conditional security. He's going against conditional security because conditional security people, they think they're going back under the law. They're trying to keep the law to be saved. They're trying to earn their salvation by their own righteousness. So Paul's actually condemning this and saying, fine, then Christ is of no effect unto you. You're no longer under grace. You're back under the law. That's what he's talking about there. He's not saying you've fallen from grace as in you lost your salvation. It's ridiculous. They're very desperate to find verses to prove you can lose your salvation. Because if you're back under the law, then Christ, he died for no reason. You know, compare this with uh, Galatians chapter, I think it's 2, verse 21. Very good comparison. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? If, you, if you're back under the law, if you're trying to keep the law to be saved, then Christ, he died in vain. He's no, of no effect unto you. That's what he's talking about there. He's not saying you've lost your salvation or you've fallen from grace as in you've lost your salvation. So he's actually condemning what these conditional security people believe. So yeah, those are there. Those are seven common verses you'll hear from conditional security heretics to say that you can lose your salvation. It's, it's, they're very desperate to prove their, their self-righteous Catholic heresy. And it is Catholic. I've shown in other videos that conditional security is taught by the Catholic Church, and it's Jesuitical too. The Jesuit Council of Trent condemns eternal security. So eternal security, or sorry, Condemns, con condemns uh, eternal security and promotes conditional security. That's what, that's what I meant to say. Uh, messed up there, but it uh, condemns eternal security and it basically uh, makes salvation out into a continual process. It's funny, conditional security heretics and, ca and uh, Catholics, they both believe the same thing for salvation. They both believe that salvation, you have to basically, Catholics believe they have to basically die in a state of, um, basically die in a state of grace, basically to be saved, and conditional security heretics, they'll say, oh, you have to basically live holy all your life and just die in this holy state to be saved. Exactly what the Catholics believe. So, conditional security is a Catholic heresy. It's a Jesuit heresy. It's Jesuitical. Just 100% Jesuitical. Con uh, eternal security is condemned in the Jesuit Council of Trent. So, don't let these conditional security Pharisees, these self-righteous, prideful Pharisees, Try to steal your joy you have in Jesus Christ once he saved you. He saved you, by the way. You don't save yourself. Again, condi conditional security, they're trying to save themselves, and they're going to end up in hell because of that. So, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. God bless you. Goodbye.